have such an issue here in Taiwan. In, in Korea, it's a little bit different. On February 14th, the girlfriend makes chocolate for the boyfriend. The boyfriend doesn't do anything. And then on March 14th, which is called White Day, the boyfriend buys purses and candy for the girlfriend. So it's a little bit different. What about here? Is it similar? Yeah? No? How does it work here? Sorry? Double seven. Double seven? Yeah, it's another character. Oh, interesting. Do you know the real reason for them? Don't mark. It's off the chocolate. Any bad, horrible Valentine stories? I am growing up, I was not a shy person. But then when I was in sixth grade, I became a shy person. It was Valentine's Day. If I start crying, I'm sorry. It was Valentine's Day, and this girl I liked approached me. And she was really nervous. I was like, oh, yes. She says, uh, I have something to tell you. I don't know how to tell you. I'm kind of nervous. I was like, don't worry, I know. <laughs> you want to ask to be a Valentine's Day? And she was like, no, I want to ask Matt. I wanted your advice. Ever since that, I've been kind of a shy, shy person. So, let's move past that quickly. Smart English. Woo! <laughs> Let me make sure I know how to work this. Okay, so today the objective is very simple. I want to sort of talk about Smart English briefly. I want to give you guys some activities that you can use in your classroom. We'll do that together. And I want you to help me too. You guys have to come up with some activities. And we'll share those together. Because we all have lots of experience here. And I'm sure you guys all have good ideas. So we'll do that together. And I want to briefly talk about why we have resources. We don't just make them for fun. There's a reason. And in the end, I hope I'm able to somehow empower you to become a better teacher in some way. Maybe through my activities, through your activities. But you, I want you to leave today more confident as a teacher. So that being said, <clears throat> I need you guys to be creative today and use your imagination. So we're going to do just three quick, wait, just four quick brain exercises. Okay? Are we ready? Okay. The first one, you're going to see a color. And I want you to tell me what color it is. But you have to do it quickly and you have to yell it. So just the color. Red. Red. <laughs> Did anyone say blue? No. The, the quiet one said blue. Lots of native speakers, they, do, they only see three F's. 
I did this three times and I could not find six Fs. Because everyone skips of. Okay? Next one. How many triangles do you see? If anybody gets this, they'll get an instant prize. I'll give you a minute. How many triangles do you see? One second. Ignore this. That's cheating. I don't know why they did that. Ignore that. Don't be 
Shy, use those legs.
I'm not sure what this is. I believe it's you clean things with it and you put it on your hand. Very special prize. Okay, congratulations. Okay, so this activity, it wasn't just to get you guys to stand up and meet each other. It was something I think you could do in your classroom. Okay, so this is what I observe every time we do this activity. I say, all right guys, stand up and meet people and you guys do, I just sat down, I just got here. And then two minutes later, I can't get you guys to sit down. Okay, you're very engaged. And with this activity, often before we start it, there is stress, maybe a little bit of nervousness, annoyed, scared. But then again, two or three minutes in, when you're more comfortable, you're relaxed, engaged, and motivated. And that's sort of the goal. Okay? Again, this activity, you can very easily adapt it to any sort of expression. What's your name? And the kids have to go around and ask each other, when's your birthday? Okay? So the idea here is, we want our kids being, <laughs> this is a bad picture. We want our kids being comfortable, and we want them to have Fun in class. Okay? Now I did some research on fun. And this is what I found out. So learning English. Fun versus no fun. <clears throat> what do you see here? The kids in blue had fun learning English. And what were their grades? A's, B's, C's. Okay? The kids that did not have fun, what happened to them? F, D, okay? So what does that tell you? Have fun. More research. At this school, this was a fun school, 98% of the kids, they were successful, they got jobs when they were done, they were happy, they can speak English. 2%, I'm not sure what happened to them. They were, you know, who knows? At not a fun school, 57% can't speak English. 70% were always sad. 70% were in prison. This is what happens. This is real research. 9% became unsuccessful pop singers. Serious problem. I'm not sure why we're laughing. So, this is what a kid looks like when he's having fun in English. This is what a kid looks like he's not having fun. And this is what's going to happen. So our job today is to introduce some fun activities that you guys can use using Smart English. When kids have fun, it is so much easier to teach. Okay? It's not always possible. You really can't have fun learning grammar. Actually, that's not true. You can't, but... Okay, so... So you guys all get a handout. On your handout, I want you to look at this list, and you can talk to the person next to you, and just write down the three biggest problems you have teaching English. One, two, three. Okay? So these are kind of our, these are our obstacles for kids having fun. So take a minute, talk to the person next to you, and just write one, two, or three for the three most challenging problems teaching.
could be for you personally as a teacher, or what you think maybe in Taiwan, or in the English as a second language. Okay, let's take a moment and talk about these together. So, does anyone want to volunteer what they think is the biggest challenge? Do I have to pick on people? Okay, mixed language levels. That is very challenging in any class, especially learning a language. What else? Who said classroom size? Okay, if your class is too big or too small, it's a problem. Classroom management. What about just boring books? Okay, that's going to change today. <laughs> what about shy or quiet students? For me, that was very challenging. Because you don't know if they're shy because they're shy people, or if they're shy because they don't understand what I'm saying. So it's really hard. What about the opposite? Talkative, loud students. Classroom pace. I'm not sure if it's the same here, but in Korea, we had to finish books very quickly. It was ridiculous. Because if you didn't finish, the parents got angry. Your students' parents. This is number one. <laughs> or your co-teacher. I hope it's not your co-teacher. That'd be bad. Okay, so this is one obstacle for us. Another one is the course books. Who uses course books? Nobody's used a course book? Just hands? Okay, like Smart English is an example of a course book. It's got six levels. It has speaking, listening, reading. Which one am I forgetting? Writing. So what are good things about course books?
about thinking, so let me think together. So in each unit, there's a dialogue that starts off the unit, and that sort of introduces new expressions and reviews old expressions. But kids sometimes need more from you as a teacher. Okay, so when we're doing these dialogues, we sort of have two ends that we want to meet. We have the fantasy. When we're teachers, we think this is what they're going to sound like. Okay? And that's this. This is my new phone. Wow! How nice! Um, what's your phone number? It's 741-8309. I'm going to the library. I'll call you later. Bye! Okay, bye! Betty! Watch out! Whoa! Thanks! Okay, so as teacher, as teachers, this is kind of what we hope for. We say, hey kids, go do the dialogue. Have fun. We want this. But does it happen? Now, usually it's closer to this.
ideas back here? Nothing? Nothing? What about over here? So if, if you were teaching this, what would you do? Because you kids, they're not going to be helped. They need more help from the teacher. This would be your job.
Okay, so you have them stand one here, one here. Start the dialogue, and each time to take two steps back. Because kids do dialogues like this. Okay, very shy. So you want them to get that voice to be confident. <clears throat> As mentioned, to get them outside of the robot, you need to give them expressions. So, I need two volunteers.
And then that person that it goes to says, my name is, and then it says, what's your name? It's a new person. Okay, over here. Quickly. And over here. What's your name? Try to think of your face. What's your name?
That's true though. That's why Thank 
interested. Come on up. You guys are my team. Mm, nobody's looking at me now. Do you want to come up? You can choose a partner. Is your friend? Okay, come up with you. talk about a couple things you can do with the flashcards. I need one partner here. So you, you guys are a team. So you can come here. And where'd your partner go? Oh, right. You can come over here. You can go over there. Partners. So there's four different things they can do. First, we'll just do describe it. Okay. So this side will have flashcards, and they will describe the flashcard to their partner, and they have to guess the correct word. When they guess the correct word, they switch sides. Okay. They run switch sides. This side is always the flashcard side. This side is always the guessing side. Okay. And you can do this as teams or with partners. So first, we'll just do describe it. Okay? So the first one to get three wins. Okay, all you have to do is you describe the word and you guess it. Okay? So hang on, let me get the cards. If you want, go ahead. 
go to page. scared to sing, usually. So one thing I always do is I will, I will model the song first in a very terrible singing voice. Make the kids cry almost so bad. And that way they're like, oh my god, teacher, you're horrible. And that gives them more confidence to try on their own. If you as a teacher can sort of embarrass yourself, which is easy for me, it can, as for some reason just give the kids more confidence. <laughs> Let me show you. Now I'll sing it perfectly. Okay? Now, I keep losing my clicker. Who took my clicker this time? One activity I like to do is you cut out pieces of the song. Okay? And because of time, we won't do this, but you cut out lines from the song. Okay? And you put kids in the teens. And you put these just anywhere in the classroom, but probably in the front, on the board. Okay, so I would put them up here. And then you give your kids a... A gap fill. Okay, they're all different. So this would have missing parts in the song. And as they listen, one at a time, they run to the front, grab a missing word from their song, and add it to their song. Until one team is done. So you just spread all the lines, or maybe just words, depending on the level, at the front, and you have them come up and grab them. So it gets them to actively be listening. Now my favorite thing to do is... You let a kid make their own song. Okay? So I want you guys to make this list of 11 words, and try to use very silly words. Okay? So one verb, one noun, one person's name, verb, direction, action. Just on your back of the piece of paper, make a list of these 11 words. And they can be very silly words if you want. Don't 
think too hard, just verb, running, noun, tiger. The idea of this activity is you're helping them make their own song, which I will show you in a second. So you should be making a list now of 11 words. So when the kids do this, they're not supposed to know what these words will be used for, okay? Because you want it to be silly. And then, after they come up with the words, you give them the song. Okay, so I'll hand these out, and you've now made your own song, okay? So I give one for each table. Now, add, don't write on this, but just sort of see how your song goes. Does everybody know who Bon Jovi is? Yeah. And see what your song sounds like. Oops, sorry. You guys want to share that? <laughs> I need to get these back afterwards, so... So now by just focusing on these words, you've made your own song. It's personal to you now. How's the song go? Okay, so you take a song from the book, and you do another gap fill, and you let them fill in their own words. Does everybody know what song this comes from? Does anybody know what song this comes from? Does anyone know Living on a Prayer? Chloe Bon Jovi. <laughs> Same sort of not very good, but... <laughs> so, the idea is you pick a song that they're all familiar with, and you let them make their own song by just filling in these missing words. Oh, hang on, what... I need to pick a more familiar song. Is there any Bon Jovi fans in here? Really? I was expecting less than that. 
Just showing you, I like Bon Jovi. So, comics. Every three units we give the kids comics to kind of introduce new language, to practice the old language. Now again, it's very easy. There's lots of things you can do. You can make it active listening. You cut it out, and the kids have to match the pictures with the dialogue. I like to, so one thing is you cut out the pictures, and you give half the kids the pictures, and the other half the dialogue. And they listen to it, and then they have to go find each other, find their partner. So the picture you have has dialogue, and they have to match. And with comics, it's also very easy to let them make their own comics, especially with the artwork. Okay? Now, at the end, you have to do some reviewing. And the review game I've always liked is called Bizarre Riot. Okay, so, again, this is a review game at the end of a chapter. And you have one kid come up, and he stands here, and then the left side will ask a question, the middle will ask a question, and the right will all ask a question at the same time. Okay, so...
So in the end, we have before, during, and after. And this is many different ways to use these resources. So I will wrap this up now. But I just want to refresh that when you're doing these activities, when you're using the books, you want to always just keep things easy, memorable, so they remember it, and then fun. Okay, and the, the fun is the challenging part, but you want to really focus on that. So, in the end, what's the last slide? I want to thank you for coming. Uh, I think we will take... First off, are there any questions at this point? I will be here for another two hours, so you guys can ask questions at any point. Um, if you want the PowerPoint, please ask. I will happily send it to you. Okay? And thank you very much for having me. Uh, I think there will be a ten minute break. And then our very talented speaker, Ian, will be next. So that will be good. Okay? So thank you very much for today.